okay, part two, uh, talking about energy exchange in our animal foods and just in what we eat, okay? So, I don't even like putting it that way. Energy exchange of eating animals and their liquid flesh, okay? Let's put it that way. Let's put it that way. I am still trying to finish my second um, peanut butter banana rice cake. <laughs> mm. So good. I love that I don't have to think about or feel guilty about eating my food. <laughs> mm. So good. All right. So, one of the things, and I got to repeat again, Doreen Virtue's book is not the only book that introduced me to some of this concept. This one just re-showed it to me in a more spiritual way. I know a lot of people are kind of upset with Doreen Virtue right now, but this is one of her better books. It's called Eating the Light. Um, she wrote it with uh, Becky Black, M-F-T, comma, R-D. Okay. Uh, really good book. I really like it. Um, I'm like rereading it right now. Um, my only thing is, and I have to kind of weed through this kind of stuff all the time anyways, being earth spiritual means that, and no offense to Christians, but I have to weed through a lot of Christian stuff or even Buddhist. They talk, she talks about Hinduism and Buddhists and a few other, um, spiritualities too, not just Christianity. And I just wanted to reference a couple of things that she um, mentions in this book. Now, there was at least two other books that I read in my early, late teens or uh, through my 20s about um, the energy exchange. Um, and you you must also remember that Darling Virtue talks about being guided by angels for a lot of different things as well. I'm not really an angel worker. That's one area that I always kind of differed um with her so i was just gonna look up really quick i should have probably tried to have this prep but i haven't really planned on focusing on this okay uh, let me get this so let me just try to say this succinctly as if you follow any of the current uh, vegan abolitionists abolitionists basically People who are advocating for becoming aware of what the animal industry is, what it really does to animals, especially the abuse and slaughter and all those things connected um, to the animal industry, the animal agriculture, okay? Um, they kill boy baby chicks the first day they're born and they're killed. They're not like knocked out and then killed. They're like... Um, put in a macerator or like blend it alive right with the eggs and stuff that or if they don't use the macerator they just throw them in the trash and tie them up in a bag and suffocate them uh, neither option is very pleasant and that's just eggs that's just boy chicks um the girls get their beaks slashed uh cut partially cut off to keep them from pecking each other and damaging the flesh that will be sold later after they're done laying eggs. Um, and they, and all these, okay, the most disturbing thing that I did not realize, I think on some level I knew it, but I did not realize is that all of these animals that are being eaten or we are eating their byproducts, their eggs, their liquid flesh, whatever, they are children or babies when we are using them and eating them. Um, a mother cow is only six years old and they can live 30 years, uh, six years old when they stop being able to give milk, when their body finally wears out, they probably had up to five to six calves by that point, their, their legs give out, they're called downers. Um, they're so depressed after the, about the third baby is born, they, they no longer chase after it and try to get their baby back. Um, they just know that they're not going to be able to, to be the mother they want to be to this baby. It's going to be taken from them. And so they're depressed. We are taking in a liquid flesh milk from a depressed, estranged mother. And we kill the boys within a few short weeks or even just a day that they're born. 
and only some of the females are raised uh, to be dairy cows, and they start getting manually raped and impregnated um, from the time that they're about 12 months old. Uh, so basically, we are raping and using children from the time that they are they weigh enough to start being productive for our use. If we did that to humans, there would be so many civil rights <laughs> violations and all kinds of weird things. I mean, it's similar to sex trafficking. It's similar to um, all these horrible things. Now, energetically, think about that. If you eat this flesh and drink this liquid that came from abused, scared, they have fight or flight chemicals, they have anxiety, depressive chemicals that are running through their bodies. There's a lot of illnesses and sicknesses that are just bio on a biological level we shouldn't be taking in. True carnivores, they can eat all this stuff and not get sick, okay? They crave the meat. They have to have it. There is no other option that they can eat, like tigers, cats, um, other true carnivores, like sharks, things like that. They have to do what they do because their bodies were made to weed out the ill. The, basically, the, the animals that are too weak to, to survive and be healthy and part of the herd or group that they are part of, their, basically, their purpose is to weed out the weak or the sick or the old and keep the herds or whatever healthy and keep the cycles of whatever those animals help. Um, like when they graze on the grass and they graze on the plants and stuff like that, that encourages the plants to produce more of their own kind and whatnot. There's a whole cycle to the whole thing. But we humans, we don't play in that cycle. We eat these animals when they are babies. We abuse them and and put chemicals in them that should never have been messed with. We genetically modify them in ways through either breeding and other ways that we should never have done because it's affecting our bodies as well. When you genetically modify an animal, that chemically modified flesh affects your body. And that's where we get women with breasts that are too big for their bodies. That's where we get cancers and other things that grow in our bodies that shouldn't be there. Um, and on a spiritual, energetic level, we take on the emotional abuse and, um, yeah, all that negative energies that is stored up in that, that body transfer to our body, okay? So, yeah, it's not a healthy thing to eat. And I have felt that way since my 20s. Um, now, when I was trying to just go ahead and eat with my, my family group and, and not cause too much more expense, I would given in because one of the few meats I actually craved is fish. I have no problem and, and totally don't feel driven to eat chicken or pork or I haven't eaten cow since I was 19. Um, I've never eaten a goat. I ate lamb once, but I didn't know it was lamb. And when I found out, I, well, I got sick and then I found out what it was and I was like, I'm sorry, I, I'm, I'm not used to eating that. Please don't give me any more. Um, I also, I, I, when I found out what veal was, I would, I cried for like off and on for a week. I, I just could not handle it. And I've never eaten veal. <laughs> never. Um, I don't eat lambs. I don't eat sheep. I don't eat goats. I don't, I just don't eat that stuff because my associate with, with my association with them, one, I know how they're treated. I know that they are sensitive. They're emotional. Um, I met those really big rats called Kamabera or something like that. They're the cutest, hugest, just adorable animals ever. And I could never imagine eating them, let alone guinea pig or any of that. I had guinea pigs as, they, they look like ginormous guinea, guinea pigs. And I had guinea pigs when I was like, um, I think around six or seven as pets. And they were the most adorable thing. They even had a litter while we had them. And they were just, oh. They were just so adorable. They were so loving. They were just so, oh, I can't even, I can't even describe. Um, I am definitely an animal lover. I was very distressed to find out about the 
destruction of the rainforest. There's just so much energetic association for me, not just on the biological and environmental and all these different ways. But for me, when you know you're taking in that negative energy of how those animals were treated or even killed, because there's a whole bunch of chemical stuff that happens during that. It, energetically, um, I remember a couple times when I was younger, I was eating, a, I think it was like chicken. And another time I was eating pig. And I had this whole flash of feeling repetitively kicked. And I had never been kicked like that in my whole life. But I had this flash. I think it was pig. I think I was eating like a pork chop or bacon. I'm pretty sure it was pork chop. And I just had this feeling of being kicked in the side over and over. And I had an auditory vision or sensory thing that went off. And I stopped eating. And and I, I think I... I started to throw up and I had to run to the bathroom and, um, and one, nobody else got sick Two, Um, it wasn't, it wasn't like, um, uh, salmonella or something like that. I was totally having a reaction to some kind of energetic memory that was in that flesh. Um, another time I was eating chicken and, I, I kept feeling a jerk in my neck while I was eating the chicken. I was eating a wing and uh, uh, a breast. And I kept feeling this jerk in my neck. Um, and I literally dropped the piece of flesh, the piece of meat out of my hands. And I'm like, oh my God, they... They broke its neck <laughs> and my grandmother looked at me like what are you talking about I was like they broke its neck and she's like well if this is factory chicken it was most likely electrocuted and I said is that any better <laughs> and so yeah that was uh, those few experiences I had really pushed me towards veganism the first time around but then you know um I had a lot of other things like I was getting uh, when I got with my husband um I wasn't used to being around as many computers and things and I'm very sensitive to vibrations off of voters and the type of computers they had in the early 90s were very vibrational and so between all the extrasensory biological stuff I was having to deal with uh, some of the more spiritual messages I was getting while I was eating food dampened just a little bit. It wasn't that I didn't feel them. I just had so many other things coming at me. It was like I could only handle so much at a time. And we had a kind of a fixed income and I kind of had to make some peace. And what I would do is I was um, one thing that they mentioned in, in her book is praying over your food before you eat it and asking spirit or the angels or whatever you work with to cleanse out the pain and negativity in the flesh. Now, I'm not saying that makes it okay for anything that happens to these animals. It does not. But if you live in some place where it's really hard to access a good blend of a vegetarian or vegan diet and you have to eat animals, their example was more about this this woman had ordered a sandwich at a deli and the person who made the sandwich was really frustrated and kind of aggressive and, and put the sandwich together just fine. But she wasn't so sure about eating or handling the food for someone that was obviously giving off so much negative emotion. And that was just the food, the person handling the food that they were putting together. Um, she was guided, she says in the book to pray over the food to, cleanse it of that excessive um, negative emotion and then a process of wrapping, cutting it into fourths, eating maybe two fourths of that and praying over the one half that she wasn't going to eat up uh, right away and putting that in the fridge and then not praying over the other one she wrapped. And when she went back and looked at this food that she had wrapped up to eat later, 
the one she hadn't prayed for was already like spoiling and looked wilted and gross. And the one she had prayed over um, looked really crisp and healthy. Like she had just put it in the fridge and it looked and tasted really great. And she decided to just throw away the one that looked kind of wilty and oaky. So energetically, there is a difference in food. I feel that there's also a difference in my experience of when you're eating a food, an animal, meat or liquid flesh or byproduct, and that animal has been abused or violently killed, and there can be still a impression in the meat or liquid of what has happened to that animal. That's my experience. Take it for what you will. That was what pushed me into vegetarianism the first time and kept me occasionally not eating um, meat more than once through all this time period. Now, um, this time around, I'm pretty sure I'm going to stick to it, that I'm not going to fall back onto eating animals of any kind again. Although, as I've said, fish has been a hard one for me, but I find knowing more about like what I was feeling when I'm eating the animals. Now that I've been eating cleaner, I started getting some of those feelings back again. Not just because I've watched all those things. Like I, <laughs> I've been cleaning up so much of my eating style that I think it's making my sensitivity rise up again, which is good in the sense that I do readings for people and I want some of that sensitivity so I can get the clearest readings possible. But it's bad when you eat your food and then you're always feeling bad about what you're eating, right? So if I'm eating vegetarian slash vegan, if I'm eating vegan, not just vegetarian, then I can avoid all that energetic suffering food, right? I can take in the healthier, cleaner food. Now, I've heard people go off about <laughs> how it, uh, they're like, well, plants are living things too. And let me stop here and give me a thumbs up, some thumbs down. Talk to me about whatever I've talked about in this chunk of video. And I'm going to start another one up. So again, this isn't too long because I know um, it's hard for people to get through the longer videos and I know I'm a bit of a chatter. So let me stop here. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Tell me what you think of what we talked about in this section and I'll see you in a minute for the next thing I wanted to talk about. All right. Bye-bye. Thank y'all.